Then we came 47, and what a year that was. That started on such a, a way with me. I remembered that day. We, we were having lunch, and the boss said, we'll go down to the brook this afternoon to crop an oak tree for some posts and some stakes. Cropping is what, what we call it round here. Some counties call it pollard, and it's where a tree is cut off so far up the ground and uh, off regularly, and that we call it cropping anyway. So off we go down, far side of the slag piece. We took a couple of saws, an axe, and a hacker. And uh, uh, we wanted a short ladder because the boss had got to get up in the tree, you see, to get about 10 foot up. And we got down there, and the boss got up in the tree, and I was to trim the branches as they came down. And he wasn't up there long. He cut a branch that was stuck right up the middle of the tree, and he got the axe, I remember. And he was stood up in this tree, axe in this bow, and there was nowhere for it to fall. There was no, no, it couldn't go for right or left, and he came straight down on top of it. And of course, it knocked him backwards. And he went on the farthest fall. The tree was on the edge of the brook, and he went right down on the bank of the brook, and he was down. Well, I could see he was hurt. And he was down in the hole, and uh, I went down and got him, got him out, and I thought I'd have to get him up to the house. And what a job I had! All across the slag piece and uphill to the boozy pasture and up to the farmhouse. I remember him. He was across my shoulders, and he was a big, heavy man, and uh, I struggled with him. I had to stop and have a rest. I was a strong young man in those days, but I had to stop and have a rest anyway. I got him up to the house, and of course. They put him to bed and rang for the doctor. Well, the doctor came up. It had started to snow by then, just started, just a faint bit of snow. And the doctor came up, would you believe, in an MG sports car. Well, it's a terrible car to come up a farm drive when it's dry, let alone when it's snowing. And it was a Dr. Russell. Dr. Russell, Sam Russell from Bromyard, and he was a character, a little stocky man with great horn-rimmed glasses, and he was a bachelor, and he was quite a character. Well, when he saw the boss, he said, what were you doing up that tree? You should have been indoors knitting socks. He said, not up that tree this weather. And he didn't do much for him. He had a look at him, and I don't think he could know. All he was worried about was getting back to Bromyard before the snow got too deep. Well, we thought he'd have a job anyway, but off he went, and he managed to get he managed to get away. But the poor boss, he was, he went to bed, and he never got up. Well, it snowed and it snowed and it snowed and it snowed. Well, you wouldn't believe how much it snowed the next two or three days. And, of course, the boss was in bed, and Shirley and I had to do all the work. We had to get all the cattle in the sheds, the sheep into the rick shed, and they had just a path round the rick shed, and then there was four or five-foot bank of snow, and they would just made this path round the rick Thank goodness we hadn't got four or five hundred ewes like we lamb up today. We'd only got seventy or eighty. We'd have never managed the quantity we have today. And Shirley and I had to water all this stock because, of course, the water wasn't laid on. There was a hand pump in the backyard, and we had to hand pump it into buckets and cart water to all this stock. I think there was 30 or 40 cattle and, uh, and these 70 sheep. And the water used to spill on your hands, and the hands uh, used to get sore, and the wind used to come. And we struggled on, and we had to cut wood to keep us warm. And it was really something like you wouldn't believe what it was like. Of course, we couldn't get the car out. It was absolutely impossible. Some people, after a week or two, tried to dig themselves out when they'd got drives of under a half. But being as our drive was a mile long, you wouldn't think of digging it out because the snow was about eight to ten foot deep in places. It would have been impossible. There were no JCBs in those days, like you can soon get it cleared now, get a tractor and a loader. There was none of that in those days. And... Uh, some people surely had to go on old Peggy the horse to Clifton and fetch the bread. She used to go on old Peggy and find her way across the fields. And then later on, we took her with the horse up to Skirm's garage where she went to Bromhead with the Edwardses, took her to Bromhead because the top road got cleared, of course. But there we were for all that time, and our road was penned up for eight or nine weeks. We never got the car out. 
And when we did get the car off, we took the boss to Worcester to be x-rayed, and when they x-rayed him, they said, how long have you been out of plaster? Well, of course, he'd never been in plaster, but I suppose his bones had set because he'd been laying in bed for six weeks. Well, anyway, he was never quite the same man after that. But we always remember that winter, and when the snow eventually went, in the second week in April, it was the second week in April before we could get on the land to do any ploughing, and it seemed everything seemed so green after being used to all this weight for so long when the green came through it seemed so green i can remember that and then we had to get busy in ploughing well the boss bought a tractor then he bought a tractor called a field marshal tractor for me to drive a single cylinder tractor made in gainsborough lincolnshire they were made and they were very strong tractors. And uh, you started them in such a queer way because I, it was a great big starting under which I got used to and used to use more often than not. But it was very cold. You start, started them with a cartridge, and just like a cartridge you put in a gun. And you put in the front and let light a litmus paper and put in the front. And it was, They were comical tractors, but they were strong and they were good and they were economical. We ran this tractor for several years and I think all we did was put a clutch which was in the fly wheel which cost a very little money. And I remember this tractor, I used to work with it, and of course it used to go bop, 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 bop. And the people at Sapi used to know when I was working because they could hear the tractor going bop, bop, bop. If you ever saw somebody in Bromo, oh, you was working till 10 o'clock last night, John, I could hear that tractor going. And <laughs> it was such a distinctive sound. And when it was stood still, it used to shake a bit, but I got used to it. And I thought the world of this tractor and did a tremendous lot of work with it. One of the jobs it was very good at was belt work. And we had what was called a hammer mill. We cemented it down in the lean-to. Why we never had a fire, I don't know, because there was great big chimneys on these martial tractors and sparks used to fly out all the time. And we used to put a belt on this hammer mill in the rick shed where there was straw and that about, and away we went. <laughs> <laughs> he never had a fire. I thought it was more like luck than judgment. This hammer mill, you put the oak sheaves in the, in the hammer mill, and, and it all came out in these big bags, and we put some mangoes on it and fed it to the cattle. It was very good feed for the cattle. It was a terrible, dusty job, real dusty job. Jenny done on a Saturday afternoon, so as not to interfere with the work in the fields. I enjoyed that Marshall tractor ever so much, and uh, we had him for several years. I was sorry to see it go in the end.